Hello and welcome to the first annual Mason Scale Award show. This is how it's going to work. I'll be handing out a series of awards for the games I've covered this year, as well as three awards handed out by the wise and unbiased people of the channel's Discord. Feel free to join and vote in next year's video. At the end, I'm also going to have a top 10 and a top 7 or 8 of my uh, personal favourites. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm pulling out the big guns first with Most Frightening Antagonist. We're talking about antagonists that follow you around and terrorise you as you play. They have to be present for a decent chunk of the game and can't appear in just scripted events and cutscenes. Which leaves us with The Monster from Amnesia the Bunker, Slaw from Rewind or Die, Mother Gooseberry from Outlast Trials, U3 from Resident Evil Separate Ways, and The Wendigo from Folklore Hunter. Whilst visually U3 is the most imposing, the amount of time he spends with you is relatively small. You encounter the Wendigo from Folklore Hunter a fair amount, but it's something you just get used to over time. Slaw is a really fun antagonist, but he's not very frightening. A Mother Gooseberry's alternate personality has a habit of dulling the fear of her over time. Which leaves Amnesia's monster as probably the most relentless and frightening roaming antagonist in the games that I've covered this year. If I had to rank them, I would probably go the monster, U3, Mother Gooseberry, the Wendigo, and then Slaw. So the first award goes to Amnesia the Bunker, congratulations. Next up is Best Designed Enemies. This is the enemies that you encounter throughout the game. They either have to be particularly frightening or have some aspect of them that stands out enough to be remarkable. This cuts out games like Signalis, Scorn, Fear Extraction Point, Trepang 2, Evil Within, and Galarians, who enemies aren't bad but fall a little below the interesting enemy requirements. There is a lot this time, but the ones that did make the cut are the Ghosts of Fatal Frame, Mask of the Lunar Eclipse, the Prisoners from Callisto Protocol, the Ganados from Resident Evil 4, the Zombies from Night at the Gates of Hell, the Shibito from Siren Blood Curse, and the various monsters of Bloodborne, and the same from The Evil Within. Whilst the ghosts in Mask of the Lunar Eclipse can be pretty unsettling with those eyes that stare into you, not all of the ghosts manage to evoke the same fear with some of them being pretty bland in design. The prisoners from Callisto Protocol are aggressive, but there's not much variety in them. Fighting them is intense though. The Ganados have always been classic enemies and watching them burst open to reveal their parasites is all the more impressive in the remake in separate ways. The zombies from Night at the Gates of Hell are certainly spooky in appearance, but the mechanics are very, very basic and they are more annoying than anything. The Shibito from Cyberbunk Curse can also be pretty frustrating to deal with, but their insectoid-like appearance is vaguely repulsive. Bloodborne's monsters range from the transformed people of Yharnam to the bug-eyed creatures of Bergenworth Hall that latch onto your head in those disturbing grab moves, and the Evil Within has some unique enemies, but the designs of the enemies you encounter the most in that game can be pretty bland. All of Bloodborne's enemies are never to be underestimated, and several of them have horrifying designs and even more harrowing grabbing moves, so to rank them, again, I'd say Bloodborne takes the crown for best design enemies, followed by Resident Evil 4's Ganados, the Shibito, the Evil Within's monsters, the ghosts, the prisoners, and finally the zombies. Next up is Best Designed World. This is mostly going to be games large enough to feel explorable and cohesive enough to not be immersion breaking. This time we've got Bloodborne again with the various areas in that game from the Hunter's Dream to Yharnam, the Nightmare Frontier to the Woods. There's lots of environments in that game that are not only attempts to explore but spooky to look at. There's also the Evil Within 2 with its open world town of Union that's really fun to explore at the start of the game, but loses some of that charm as time goes on. There's really only two games in this list since many of the others are linear or nowhere near the size of these two to compare. This isn't much of a competition, Bloodborne is easily more of an impressive game with the expansive environment storytelling and howling environments. There isn't much point ranking this one. Next up is Best Atmosphere. We're now getting into the bulk of the review scores, so obviously I'll be looking at the ones that got the point for Atmosphere but I'll be handpicking the ones that really had fantastic atmospheres. 
First up is Phasmophobia, with the haunted houses you frequent during your time playing. Many of the houses aren't foreboding, but knowing what lurks inside creates a tension like no other. Then Amnesia the Bunker is back again with the paranoia and fear generated by the monster and the wind-up flashlight. Those dark corridors are near pitch black and the dread as you go from area to area is unbearable. Signalis' atmosphere manages to be bleak but soaked in this sadness that bleeds through its soundtrack, a truly sorrowful game. Scorn creates an immensely impressive atmosphere with its alien visuals and dark ambient soundtrack being able to create the genuine feeling of being on a foreign world. Bloodborne is back yet again with its various environments that either creep out or become hostile, and finally, Fatal Frame masks the lunar eclipse with its dreamlike ghostly environments full of white noise and film grain. It's very close, but I'd have to go with Scorn simply because very little feels like that game does. Soaking in its atmosphere is truly special and an ancient dead world vibe that doesn't happen in many other games. This one isn't worth ranking. Most of the games talked about here are so wildly different from each other and don't compare at all that comparing them would really achieve nothing. Next up is Scariest Game. I feel a lot of people will skip to this moment, but here are the games that I personally found the most frightening of the games played this year. First up is Phasmophobia. Dealing with the ghosts and the houses they haunt is utterly terrifying and I really had to push myself to go into the houses alone to pick up equipment or take readings. This wasn't always the case as some ghosts were very reclusive and playing with my friends could sometimes be disarming based on how they reacted to things. Back once again is Amnesia the Bunker, with its various mechanics often put me in a panic when trying to figure my way out of a situation, but this also had a habit of bordering on the frustrating as things often mount up in an unavoidable way. Next up is Madison, which did a fantastic job of creating confusing and unpredictable things that were frightening to deal with or endure, really working in the psychological horror elements. And From the Darkness did something similar, but managed to condense the experience down to a shorter, more focused game. Really though, the game that scared me the most was probably Madison, with moments like the bewildering encounter with some kind of monster that I never really identified, and the event was burned into my mind and made me take my headphones off to leave the area since I was so freaked out by it. To rank them is again a bit hard, but here we go. Madison, From the Darkness, Amnesia the Bunker, Phasmophobia. Best story is really the story that was the most evocative emotionally or was the most interesting. Bloodborne is back again with its phenomenal cosmic horror story about the people of Yharnam and transformations as well as the scholars of Bergenworth with their obsession with attaining more knowledge and understanding that ultimately led to their undoing. Signalis' story is a beautifully tragic tale based on the longing of a partner that follows the surreal twists and turns as the androids show more human traits and despair of the situation they're in. Through the woods and its heartbreaking tale of a mother's journey after our abducted son through the dark fantasy of Norse mythology, Strangeland, with its introspective story that had more than enough philosophical questions to last a lifetime, and also Doki Doki Literature Club with its mind-bending tale of a simple poetry class that isn't what it seems. Again, story is really subjective, and whilst I thought both Bloodborne and Signalis could very easily have won this, I'm choosing Doki Doki Literature Club because its story was not only surprising but brilliantly executed and defied all expectations, going outside the box to touch you on a different level a game I wasn't really expecting to get into at all. Ranking them again is a bit unfair, so let's move on. Sound design is often overlooked in horror games, but without it, the whole game ends up feeling limp and lifeless. So good sound design really makes a difference, with it often having a few tricks of its own. Most games passed this, but only a few really went above and beyond. Our nominations are Scorn with its fantastic machinery and deep spacious reverb that really turned the dial up on the immersion, 
The Callisto Protocol also had some pretty stellar sound design with its metallic prison, feeling like a giant beast you were trapped inside. RE4, with its incredibly slick sound design, had everything from the sound of opening your inventory, sending ripples through your headphones. And finally, Amnesia the Bunker, that had an almost peerless sound environment, with the tunnels of the bunker reflecting every sound in its corridors. Whilst this was very close to them all being very much perfect, the sound design in Callisto Protocol is extremely good, with every little detail caught in audio perfection, and the voice acting was way beyond what I was expecting for the game. Ranking them again, we've got the Callisto Protocol, Amnesia the Bunker, Resident Evil 4, and finally Scorn. Best soundtrack I've decided to keep separate because the soundtracks of some of these games this year have been fantastic on their own. This is very subjective and a lot of people may disagree. Instead of talking about these, let's let the soundtracks talk for themselves.
I'm choosing Signalis giving it its first award, but you choose yourself what you think is the best and let me know in the comments. Goriest Game Gore isn't an essential part of horror games, but there's an immense satisfaction when something is the right kind of gory. This one is mostly down to satisfaction, disgust, and appearance. Instead of talking about each one, I'll show some footage and let you decide. I'm going to have to go with Eva within with this one, with the over the top head explosions being so very satisfying to pull off. Best multiplayer games. Me and my friends ended up playing several multiplayer games and after a while of playing, it wasn't very hard to choose. Despite having played Phasmophobia, Demonologist, Ghost Exile, Folklore Hunter and The Outlast Trials, it was ultimately forewarned that earned the most respect, being a criminally underrated game that continued to be fun and frightening game after game, with so much replayability. When it came down to any kind of ghost investigation game, there was no question forewarned was the one we chose time and time again. It is a shame so few people are playing it. Best Survival Horror after providing several options to the people of Discord to choose their favourite survival horror game out of The Evil Within, Resident Evil 4, Galarian's, Amnesia the Bunker and many many others, they chose Signalis. And it's really a great return to the classic survival horror of the past with a fantastic story and a brilliant soundtrack. Best Psychological Horror The results of the psychological horror vote were inconclusive. What was the best psychological horror game I reviewed this year? We just don't know. Best DLC Finally we have the best DLC which included Bloodborne's The Old Hunters and Resident Evil 4 separate ways, but the people of Discord almost unanimously voted for Fear Extraction Point, which is a DLC that easily bests the main game and its horror content. It's a very impressive expansion to say the least. And that brings an end to this year's award show, but the video isn't over. It's time for this year's critical top 10 versus my personal favourite games. These are the games that I think are the best that I ended up reviewing this year. It's been quite a small year for reviewing games with all the changes to the channel that happened around July or whatever, but let's get on with the list and just hope that next year is better. Number 10, Phasmophobia. The first multiplayer horror game I ended up reviewing this year was still one of the best, with the Haunted House Simulator having some utterly harrowing moments of being trapped inside with a ghost. Between the feel-bad sensation you always get when you enter a property, to hearing the door close behind you and realising you're being hunted, the game used a lot of cool mechanics to invoke fear and really nailed it, with so many games trying to emulate what it did. Number 9, The Evil Within. The Evil Within is a greatest hits of horror games. Its combat fully brings a survival horror to the flexibility and precision of a third person shooter, whilst presenting environmental traps in a sometimes intense atmosphere. The gory head explosions and shape shifting environments make it unforgettable. Number 8 The Resident Evil 4 Remake. 
The Resident Evil 4 remake enhances nearly everything from the original and already great game and focuses more on the horror aspects, putting the fear back into the game, but only to a level. It's still one of the best of the year though. Number 7. Madison Madison feels like a culmination of a lot of things that have been building since PT, and it does an incredible job piecing together unnerving scenario after unnerving scenario, whilst telling a story of possession and decay. Number 6. Forewarned Forewarned is another game that just goes above and beyond, building on the work laid down by its inspiration, improving on things that still haven't been perfected in its inspirations. It's a brilliant multiplayer experience that never fails to be frightening to me. Number 5. From the Darkness From the Darkness is the perfect haunted house ride, with an incredible set of scripted events that manage to condense an experience like Madison into a 40 minute game where every second feels like an hour. The intensity is insane. Number 4. Fear Extraction Point Extraction Point as a DLC is a real triumph, besting the main game. It's an expansion like From the Darkness, condensed the best things about the main game into a three hour experience of shooting perfection, with plenty of spooky atmospheres and scary moments thrown in. Whilst its story is no longer canon, it's still a fun ride regardless. Number 3. Signalis Signalis is a coming together of so many unique ideas and creepy things to create this unsettling storm of sorrowful horror, with its sad story interjected with its nightmarish environments, and then there's Elster, stuck in the middle of a world that's deteriorating, like she is. Number 2. Amnesia the Bunker the Bunker is a stark change for frictional games, but one it needed. The Bunker is infinitely replayable with constantly shifting resources and a nerve-shattering experience fueled by an enemy that's always listening to you through the walls, all under the backdrop of the horrors of the First World War. Number 1. Bloodborne Bloodborne easily takes the cake as one of the most impressive cosmic horror games out there, with its brilliant story and world building and tense environments and horrifying enemies that make each area unique in its own way. Knowing what happened in certain places makes some things even more unpleasant, which I guess is the true cost of enlightenment. Bloodborne is already an impressive game, but it's a fantastic horror experience. And now for my personal list. Just to remind you, I don't always like the games I rate high, and I don't always rate high the games that I like. So uh, let's get started. Number 7, The Callisto Protocol. Despite not enjoying it initially, I ended up playing it through to the end in a few days, which is abnormal for me. The game wasn't the best horror experience, but it was still a fair amount of fun to play. Surprisingly so. Number 6, Trepang 2. This is another game low in horror content, but it was an absolute blast to play and I wouldn't uninstall it for anything. Number 5. Rewind or Die The horror comedy vibe may have removed a lot of the fear, but playing Rewind or Die gave the classic spooky Halloween feel of excitement and fun, even though a man in a pig's mask is trying to kill you. Number 4. Forewarned Forewarned was the most fun with friends for all of the various mechanics and frankly incredible number of scripted events that I was still uncovering long after the review was posted. It's the go-to choice for horror fun with friends. Number 3. The Resident Evil 4 Remake The remake of Resident Evil 4 was fantastic, and playing through its campaign was immense amount of fun. With all the new features, it was a new game out of an old classic that, if I had time, I'd play it all again. Number 2. Bloodborne my critical list overlap this time is Bloodborne, but it's not much of a surprise. I really wanted to talk about this game even though it's not strictly a horror game. Its world is immaculate and its sound design is incredible. It's by no means an easy game, but sometimes that's what makes it fun. Number 1. Strangeland Strangeland was a really cerebral game, and I love that sort of thing. It doesn't feel like there's enough games like this in existence that I've had the pleasure of playing.
And that brings an end to this year's award show. I'll let the band players out, but I've got a few last things to say. Whilst this year has been pretty turbulent with a lot of changes to the channel, some of which I still deeply regret having to make, I'm very grateful to everyone who subbed even if they don't get the notifications about my videos. I'm hoping to make more interesting content and reviews in the coming year, and despite everything I have no intention of slowing down or giving up. I hope you guys have a great Halloween, thank you for watching, and always go check out Bumps in the middle of the night. Peace.